The title Sword of Allah was given to Khalid ibn al-Walid. Will you explain why? First and foremost, it is imperative that our listeners be reminded at all times of the following fact. That almost the entire historical record of Muhammadan Islamic battles, stories and events is based on the one-sided reports as were written by the victorious Muhammadans. Only an insignificant number of records survived to tell the story from the victim's side. No records have ever been found from the Christian or Judaized Arabs who were either exiled, slaughtered or enslaved. The same can also be said regarding the pagan Arabs. Not many people realize that the speed with which the Muhammadan armies were able to conquer the Christian Byzantine Empire especially was achieved due to the following facts. 1. Christians were so divided amongst themselves that Catholic Europe was more willing to let the Byzantine Christians be defeated by the Arabs than give them aid. 2. Many of the cities surrendered to the Muhammadans because the populace of different Christian sects hated the Byzantine Christians more than they feared the hordes of Muhammadan Islam. 3. Although the hordes of Muhammadan Islam had no knowledge of siege engines, of catapults, or any of the technologies required to overcome wall cities, the abject surrender of the Christians allowed them a lightning victory. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that those who do not learn from history will most assuredly be doomed to repeat it. Today's Christians are even more divided than they were 1400 years ago. European Christians in particular are not lifting a single finger to help their brothers and sisters in Christ in Africa or Asia, who are regularly suffering under the onslaught of a virulent revival of fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam. Moreover, especially among European Christians, they have neither pride in their religion nor in their nations and are unwilling to defend their democracies. Khalid ibn al-Wadid, 592-642, was from the Meccan tribe of Quraysh who opposed Muhammad and played a vital role in their victory at the Battle of Uhud. He later accepted Islam, however, and joined Muhammad after the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah and commanded various expeditions for him. Three months after Khalid's arrival to Medina, Muhammad sent an envoy to the Ghassanids with a letter asking the chieftain to accept Islam. While passing through Mu'tah, this envoy was allegedly intercepted and killed by a local Ghassanid chieftain. Traditionally, diplomatic envoys held immunity from attack, and the news of this act inflamed Muhammad. It was A.D. 629. An expedition was prepared to take punitive action against the Ghassanids. Muhammad appointed three different commanders to succeed each other in the case of death in battle. During the battle, the three named commanders were slain and Khalid was selected as the commander. He was able to maintain his army of 3,000 soldiers against the numerically superior forces of the Byzantine Empire and Ghassanid Arabs in what could be known as the Battle of Mu'tah. Because of Khalid's brilliant military abilities, the Muslim army survived from what would have been a shameful defeat. Khalid broke nine swords during combat in the battle, and after the Battle of Mu'tah, he was given the title Sword of Allah. In this very rare instance, there is a report from the side of the Byzantines which paints a completely different picture. This is a chronicle written by a Byzantine monk called Theophanes. According to Theophanes, the Muhammadan army intended to attack the local Arabs on a feast day. However, the vicar Theodorus learned about their plans and gathered a force from the garrisons of local fortresses. He fell upon the Muslims at Mu'tah and routed them. Three of the Muslim leaders were killed and only Khalid ibn walid managed to escape with the rest of the army. The Mu'tah battle was a defeat for Muhammad's pirates since the Arabian tribes of Judam and Lakhm were among the Byzantine allies that defeated the Muhammadans. In 630 AD, Muslims advanced from Medina to conquer Mecca. In the conquest of Mecca, Khalid commanded one of the four Muslim armies that entered Mecca and he had a skirmish with the Quraysh cavalry. Later on, he was made commander of the Muslims' cavalry in the Battle of Hunyan and participated in the siege of Taif and other skirmishes. In 631, he was present at the farewell Hajj of Muhammad. Khalid is noted for his military prowess, commanding the forces of Muhammad and those of his immediate successors of the Rashidun Khalifate, Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al-Khattab. 
He has the distinction of being undefeated in over a hundred battles against the numerically superior forces of the Byzantine Roman Empire, Sassanid Persian Empire, and their allies. After Muhammad's death, many tribes broke away in revolt against the oppressive rule of Medina. Khalid played a key role in commanding Medinan forces for Abu Bakr in the Ridda or apostasy wars which caused the slaughter of thousands of Arabs. According to Shia sources, Khalid preferred more aggressive methods and sent out parties of horsemen to round up the fugitives and plunder their property. One such party seized Malik bin Nuwayra and his family and brought them into Khalid, although they claimed to be Muslims. The men of Medina, who were with the army, protested vigorously against Khalid's ruthlessness, but without avail. Khalid declared Malik an apostate and ordered his execution. The same night, Khalid raped Malik's widow, Layla bint al-Minhal, who is said to be one of the most beautiful women in Arabia at the time. Khalid's rape of Layla later became a controversial issue because there was a group of people who believed that Khalid had killed Malik to get Layla and Khalid was called by Khalifa Abu Bakr to explain the matter. I would like to remind our listeners that Khalid was only following Muhammad's sunnah of raping the women of his slaughtered victims the same night and then his followers called it marriage. After the incident of Malik, Khalifa Abu Bakr sent Khalid to crush the most powerful threat to the nascent Islamic state of Medina, another self-proclaimed prophet, Musaylima. Khalid won a decisive victory against him in the Battle of Yamama, which was fought in 632 AD. With the defeat of Musaylima, nearly all resistance of the rebel tribes collapsed. Our listeners should be made aware that it was during this very battle that hundreds of the memorizers of the Quran were slaughtered and with them all the verses that only they knew about. Now, Khalif Abu Bakr decided to expand the empire. The Islamic conquest of Persia was to begin. Khalid was sent to the Persian Empire with an army consisting of 18,000 to conquer the richest province of the Persian Empire, Iraq. In one year, 633 AD, by superb generalship, Iraq was wrested from the Persians and was under the Muhammadan Arabs. Abu Bakr congratulated Khalid ibn al-Walid over his victories and gave him a new task, to enter the Byzantine province of Syria and command Islamic armies there. The Byzantine province of Syria in those days consisted of modern-day Syria, Jordan, Israel, the Palestinian territories, Lebanon, and southern Turkey. Passing through the Syrian desert, Khalid, with half of his army of 9,000 warriors, entered Syria in June 634 and commanded the 23,000-strong Muslim army present there under the command of four generals, Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah, Yazid ibn Abu Sufyan, Sharjil bin Hushana, and Amr bin al-As. On the 22nd of August 634, during the siege of Damascus, Abu Bakr died, having made Umar his successor. Umar's first move was to relieve Khalid from commanding the army and appointed Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah as the new commander-in-chief of the Islamic army. There is only one known reason for Khalid's dismissal, which is that the Caliph Umar feared his soldiers might rely on Khalid for victory and not Allah, so he relieved him of his post. Even though Umar relieved him of high command, he remained the effective leader of the forces arrayed against the Byzantines during the early stages of the Byzantine-Arab Wars. Under his command, Damascus was captured in 635, and the key Arab victory against the Roman Byzantine forces was achieved at the Battle of Yarmouk, 636, which led to the conquest of Bilad al-Sham. Abu Ubaidah held a meeting with his high command officers, including Khalid, to decide future conquests. They decided to conquer Jerusalem. The siege of Jerusalem lasted four months, after which the city agreed to surrender, but only to Caliph Omar ibn al-Khattab in person, who came and then Jerusalem surrendered on April 637. Khalid's popularity and fame among the Arabs became so great that poets recited odes about his glorious achievements to such an extent that the Caliph Omar found a flimsy pretext to actually dismiss him from the army. He then went to Medina to meet Omar to protest about what he considered to be injustice. Omar praised him in these words, You have done, and no man has done as you have done. But it is not people who do, it is Allah who does. Later, Omar explained his dismissal of Khalid. I have not dismissed Khalid because of my anger or because of any dishonesty on his part. 
but because people glorified him and were misled. I feared that the people would rely on him. I want them to know that it's Allah who does all things, and there should be no mischief in the land. Khalid had wanted to die a martyr in the field of battle and was disappointed when he knew that he would die in bed. Khalid put all the torment of his soul into one last anguish sentence. I fought in so many battles seeking martyrdom that there is no place in my body but have a stabbing mark by a spear, a sword or a dagger. And yet here I am, dying on my bed like an old camel dies. May the eyes of the cowards never sleep. Khalid's successful military career and valor were repaid with what can only be described as ignominy.